Well, we're talking New York Jets football once again on the Our Lads Football Network, and we had an opportunity to talk to our next guest uh, about a week ago when we went over the top three draft needs for the New York Jets, and that is available on the Our Lads Football YouTube channel. There is a link in the description of this video, so you can check that out. Uh, and again, that was about a week ago, so that was definitely before the big blockbuster trade for the New York Jets just a few days ago. So it's good timing that we had this scheduled anyway to bring back uh, Matthew O'Leary uh, from the Jets Report YouTube channel. Actually, the Jet Report YouTube channel. Matt, thanks for doing this again. And uh, yeah, I think uh, now that we, we get an opportunity to talk post uh, Hassan Reddick trade, uh, things uh, are a little bit better in Jetland. Absolutely. That one kind of came out of nowhere. It felt like they were kicking the tires on Jadavion Clowney. They seemed interested in adding an edge rusher, but go out there and in your words, you know, pull a blockbuster trade, which is, that's exactly what it is in landing a guy like Hassan Reddick. So excited to break down the, the state of the roster today. Yeah, we're going to do that by going over the depth chart uh, for our lads. Over, and again, we'll have a link in the description for that as well. Um, matter of fact, if I pop it up right there, everybody could see it. And um, what I'm also going to make sure of is while everybody sees it, uh, Matt can see it as well. So uh, let's go ahead. I tell you what, uh, let's start with the impact of the trade because really it's one of those things where it does kind of look like it's almost like a swap. You know, Eagles get edge rusher, Jets get edge rusher, that kind of deal. The, the thing, though, is, of course, the Eagles get the younger player. Okay, got it. But I'm really excited about this trade because I'm also comparing this to what could have happened if they would have signed Shaq Barrett. I wanted Shaq Barrett the year that the Bucks uh, acquired him in free agency because I, I saw he was stuck behind that great those great edge rusher, uh, edge rushers at, in Denver, and you could just tell with the limited time he was playing there that if he just gets full time somewhere, he could break out. It's exactly what happened to him in Tampa Bay, um, and uh, and so when you see Redick. Uh, uh, in his situation, when you when when you see the comparison, though, is is that Barrett, since that stretch of three out of four years where he was just a monster, the last couple of years not so good, and he's thirty one years old. Reddick, I believe, he's a little younger. I think a year or two younger, maybe than Barrett, and he has not stopped. He's still a double digit sack guy for the past four years. So this looks like a much better deal for the Jets. I know we had a trade for him. That's the difference. We had to give up something for him, which could be a second round draft pick, but I'd still, hey, that's in 2026. This is Jet fan. I could care less as long as this turns into something that which we hope it does. And that is a very successful football team. Uh, championship, playoffs, whatever we want to imagine, I'm sure we're all going to forgive that trade in a few years as long as it works out like that. Absolutely. That's that's the thing. It's, you know, two, three drafts from now, really. The 2024 yeah. draft hasn't happened yet. So you got to go all the way to 2026. Uh, and for that to become a second-round pick, he has to have 10-plus sacks, which that one I think is pretty hittable. But I don't know if he's going to go over the 67 and a half percent of snaps with how the Jets rotate their edge rushers. You know, I think it was Jermaine Johnson leading the way last year with around 66 percent. So I think he is going to have a big impact there uh, on the defensive line. Losing Bryce Huff was a, a tough pill to swallow. I thought he was an ascending player, had his first, you know, 10 sack season. I think he's going to do very, very well in Philadelphia. But once you know, you already talk about him leaving in terms of replacement options. It's hard to get much better than what the Jets did with trading for Hassan Reddick. And, you know, with the future capital they gave up, it doesn't impact what they're going to do in 2024 in that draft. So I'm good with the trade. I think it was a, a wise choice, you know, pivoting once they you know struck out on Jadavion Clowney. He goes for big money to Carolina. They pivot and now they trade for a, a really good pass rusher four straight years of double digit sacks. I like the move. Yeah, I mean, look, I, again, the, the the thing is, I'm sure he was trying to stay away from having to trade draft capital. It's the reason he went after Clowney. It's the reason he went after Barrett. But again, I mean, I think I don't think there's any question you got the better player. That's the whole reason why it costs what it costs the Jets. So I think because of that, uh, we're, we're going to be just fine with that. And like you said, I think because of the rotation situation, 
uh, it might work out in the Jets' favor anyway when it comes to deciding whether it's a second or a third round pick. So it looks like the Jets, even though they need a rotation of about nine to ten guys up front, it looks like maybe they only have to add one more player. If that, they, they look like they're pretty done up front. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. Looking at that depth chart, um, you know, a- adding Reddick, it gives you your four guys that you're going to really rotate a lot with Jermaine Johnson, John Franklin Myers, um, and then Will McDonald as well is expected to have a bigger role. I'm curious if they do, if they were to add anything, I think maybe on the interior somewhere, uh, they added Kinlaw as their, you know, bigger spend on the interior defensive line. But, you know, just looking at how, you know, it, it's, it's laying out right now, that room looks pretty full. So yeah. I wouldn't expect them to do too much more at that position. And again, we have to keep in mind that even though John Franklin Myers, even though the Jets label him as a defensive end, he plays just as much, if not more, inside, and he's a lot more effective inside. So um, that's what's good about having him around is his versatility, especially as a pass rusher inside. And Solomon Thomas, who really hadn't done much at all for most of his career, was labeled a bust early on in his career, really had his best season last season. And that's why I thought it was a no-brainer to bring him back. Yeah, I agree with you there. I thought he struggled a couple years ago, his first year with the Jets, but I thought took some nice steps last year. And they're kind of hoping the same thing happens with Javon Kinlaw. Yep. You know, that's a former first round pick from the 49ers. Similar situation. Did things didn't work out in San Fran? He follows Robert Sala over to the Jets, and they have some high hopes for him if he can stay healthy. All right. And the linebacker room uh, looks set. Of course, they only use two most of the time. I will say this, though, and I'm not Mr. Defensive. I, I'm not a defensive coach. I, I, I understand that they do things f- for reasons, but I just would like to see Quincy Williams used a little bit more as a pass rusher. I, I mean, we saw what happened when he unleashed him against Denver. I mean, they did it like a couple of times, and it's, it's like every time it seems like they just unleash him to, to, to fill that role, he seems to be able to fill it. I know why they don't do it, but I don't know. I just think that maybe – can you do us a little bit more? Just give us a little bit more Quincy Williams in the, in the edge rush department. But in any event, they've got an excellent tandem there right now. And the, the question, though, is just going to be upon building what they have within regarding Sherwood, Barnes, and Surratt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the top two guys, and that's a, a great linebacker duo, one of the best linebacker duos in football. I agree with you with how Quincy Williams is just a very tenacious player. I think he makes for a really good pass rusher. But, yeah, I mean, the two of them, it doesn't get much better. You could talk about maybe adding some depth, but they did that last year when they uh, they drafted Zayer Barnes in the yep. sixth round. And Jamie and Sherwood's a player that they really like a lot. I know that he's converted safety to linebacker, but – they love him and, and Chas Surratt, someone that Sala seems to talk up any chance he gets. So I think they're comfortable with that room. Um, sure, they could probably use a little bit more depth, but I, I don't really see them being all that active in in the linebacker market either in you know the fringes of free agency at this point or in the draft. Yeah, the, the interesting uh, thing to keep an eye on is just going to be okay. Sherwood last year of his deal, so do they bring in another guy later in the draft? Just a, you know, an in case kind of guy, uh, and that's the other thing that we're going to have to be keeping an eye on because uh, in about a year, boy, there are going to be some big decisions from that 2022, 2022 draft uh, with three first round draft picks that Joe's going to have to try and figure out. You know, does he give some con- early contract extensions? Uh, at least you don't have to worry about a first round deal with Brees but still that's something to keep an eye on when you're talking about drafting and making sure you have other guys just in case sort of like what he did with Will McDonald last year um he knew it was he knew the writing was on the wall he knew that if Huff had a really good season he wasn't going to be able to uh keep him and so I thought that was a really good deal and it's going to be interesting to see what happens and I'm not gonna we'll get into the whole offensive side thing in a minute but not, not jumping ahead but we all know I mean a lot of the Jet fans were concerned about not drafting a tackle last year and Will McDonald he doesn't do anything do we need any do, did we really need another edge rusher well this should be interesting because if they do go out and draft a tackle which we expect them to do and Will McDonald has a really good year, then it's almost like, well, you see, now can you, we got the offensive tackle anyway, and, and you like him, don't you? And and now you got Will McDonald who's looking like, you know, the next Jermaine Johnson. So it just shows you why you got to be patient as a fan base and just don't jump too quickly into observing whether or not a draft or a particular player uh, was worthy of being picked after just year one. 
No, absolutely. You got to give these guys a little bit of time. When you get into that second and third season, you usually have a little bit of a better idea of who's going to do what for you. And yeah, I mean, don't rule out Will McDonald's impact, especially on third down and rushing downs as a pass rusher this season. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun seeing him develop. He could really be a big time player. And again, also Jermaine, he really could have a breakout year. And, uh, he, you know, to tell you the truth, he might be the first guy they might want to extend. Because if he has the breakout year that we're all hoping for, uh, he's going to command big dollars and they're going to have to try to do whatever they can to hold on to him. Let's take a look at that secondary. And the secondary also looks like it's pretty close to being done, except there is a glaring hole at safety. If there's an injury, if you got to go to another guy, there's still Ashton Davis sitting out there, though. And the question is, is that the fallback? Do they wait until after the draft? If they don't get a guy they like, do they try to bring him back? Uh, I understand what Davis is probably doing. Maybe he's out there trying to get a you know a nice contract. I think he deserves a decent contract. I, we're not going to obviously give him uh, anything substantial, but he, he seemed to have some uh, impact, uh, not just last year, but the last couple of years. In his limited uh, snaps, he seems to be a guy that is around the ball. He's good on special teams. So if they bring Ashton Davis back, I'm not so sure they need to do much else uh, as far as the secondary is concerned as well. Yeah, I'm with you. I think if you add one more veteran to the mix there, I think you're good. I, I really like Chuck Clark. I was looking forward to seeing him last year before the injury. And Tony Adams is a player that they really like and had a couple big moments last year. He's probably never going to be that an absolute star, but with how the Jets play defensively, they're not necessarily looking for that at, yep. uh, at safety. So I think if they just do like what you said, bring back an Ashton Davis for some depth, that's probably enough. Uh, for this room and who knows they have a lot of day three picks as well they could always add another body late there but this is in a spot where i would expect them to be in on any of the bigger name safety options that's still left in free agency or spending a crazy early pick on in the draft and the other thing uh we got to keep an eye on with the secondary room is reed uh carter clark are only uh, they only have one year left on their deals so and 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 Reed is going to be interesting because with all the money the Jets are going to have to th save money on for those twenty twenty two picks that we talked about, and how important it is overall with cash with cap space. I don't know. I don't know if the Jets are going to be able to hold on to DJ Reed after this year. So that's something to keep an eye on in the draft. Is if they do end up using an early round pick on a corner, that might be writing on the wall that they also feel that they might end up they not might not be able to bring back both Reed and Carter after this year. Yeah, and that's you know something that is going to be a, a big discussion point, I think, is you kind of have to choose almost, it feels like, in a way, which one. Michael Carter has been a really nice developed slot yeah. corner. DJ Reed has been great. He's lived up to that signing and then some. He's been a really nice running mate for Sauce Gardner. But I'm with you. It kind of feels like they have to make a choice there between one of the two. I don't know if I would think that they – spend that first round pick or an early pick on corner this year Agreed. but you know it, it's going to be definitely be something that they need to address in 2025 i would think yeah oliver's an intriguing player because he has talent he, he has shown the ability to play well uh over the last few years so i think he's definitely going to be an impact and a nice uh, signing um even though it was only uh for just a year but um hey you know what if he plays well maybe he hangs around uh, at a cheaper price Okay, let's now move ahead to the offensive side. And everything is really uh, about, is it going to be an offensive lineman or a wide receiver? How are the Jets going to go about uh, drafting? Especially since they only have, uh, they don't, excuse me, have a second round draft pick. And then you get into the possibility of what to do with, are you, are you okay, are you going to uh, trade Zach Wilson? So if you trade Zach, which most people believe will happen, then do you at some point early in this draft find a quarterback? Do you find someone? You can probably only do that, though, I believe, if you are if you trade down from 10 to get the extra pick to use on a quarterback. Then you can use that maybe on your second first rounder or your second round pick. Maybe a guy like Leary or Rattler, one of those guys. Um, so that's going to be the interesting thing. I believe... They're going to go first and foremost with offensive line because the receiver uh, group this year in the draft is so deep uh, that I think with possibly seven 
offensive tackles going in the first round, the talent isn't going to be left when you get to second round, third round. But you have a lot more in the kitty there as far as talent at wide receiver in the second round or third round, which is the reason why even though, hey, you might be a superstar-looking player at, at wide receiver sitting right there, it'd be too good. I don't know fans, they look at receivers more than they do offensive linemen, and it's more of a sexy pick. But in general, I do think the fans understand that the Jets have to continue to rebuild and, uh, and, and make sure that that offensive line goes too deep almost at every position. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you, by the way. I think really my preference might be to trade down and get that second round pick so I could take a, a swing at wide receiver in the top 50, but having a first and second round pick and drafting an offensive lineman in the first round, I think is still absolutely on the table. I know they f- technically filled all five starting spots through free agency, but Tyron Smith misses time every year. Morgan Moses is 33 and is coming off a torn pack. Yeah. Uh, I think it's worthwhile to continue to add to that room. You're going to need more than just five guys to play on the offensive line throughout the year. (laughs) So uh, I'm totally on board with going offensive line in the first round if that's the route that they want to go. And I I like the trade down because it kind of allows you to do, um, you know, multiple swings at the positions of need in the, you know, in in the wide receiver room and the offensive tackle room. So uh, I would expect them to be active at both those positions, even if they don't, you know, if they stay put, right? Like, and, and they don't trade back, I would still think like, most likely those are the first two positions to come off the board for the Jets in the draft. And luckily there's a lot of talent at both spots. Yeah. And I wouldn't even be surprised if something happens where they can't trade down is if they mortgage a pick next year to, to use it for this year, because they do understand that this year is going to be such a huge year for everybody that I think they'd rather take a pick away from next year, put it into this year um, and use that pick on again, whether it's a, a receiver or an, a, a, wide, a receiver or a quarterback. Um, because I don't, you know, as a, as a fan, I just don't want to see that quarterback room go into the season with just Rodgers and Taylor. Uh, yes, it's all about Rodgers. It's all about winning in the postseason and all that. And I get it. But just, I don't know, it's just be a bad feeling for me. It's almost like, you know what, I just, if, if, you, if you're not going to draft a quarterback, then just keep Zach. Just don't get rid of him for nothing. I just, I just feel a little stale not having a, like, what is our future look like a quarterback player on our roster this, if we don't have that guy uh, going into the season um, and, of course, use that up in the draft. Yeah, I think. I would expect the Jets to draft a quarterback at some point in this draft. Uh, it's probably on day two or early on day three, somewhere in that third to fourth round window. Uh, Jordan Travis of Florida State's a name that's going to get brought up a lot. They've met with him. Michael Pratt, they were at his pro day, the quarterback out of Tulane. Uh, Spentler, Spencer Rattler is another name that was once considered a very high, you know highly touted Yeah, prospect. it was. Yeah. Fell, fell a little bit, um, but has a lot of experience as well. So, uh, I, I think that's the route that they're going to go. I'd be surprised if Zach Wilson's on the roster in uh, in a few weeks here, but um, I, I do think that they add some youth to that room to sit behind Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor. And I almost I almost get the feeling that that's 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 the real reason why Zach is still here. That let's just get through the draft first. Let's get our guy that we want, and then once we know we have that young prospect already on the roster. Then we can go out there, and we already we already know that there are a few teams that might be interested because we don't know what's going on. I know that the, the, whatever the the, uh, the 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 press and and their angle is, it's uh, especially lately, it's it, it's all negative. Uh, so so no matter what Joe Douglas does, it, it's uh, they must be getting over on Joe. It, it must be well he you know nobody wants Zach. That's why you know uh, uh, all these other quarterbacks are going because nobody wants Zach. I just don't believe that. I, 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 there's no way I believe that some of these quarterbacks that have been traded that the NFL scouts believe they're better than Zach Wilson. I just don't. I just think that maybe Joe feels he's not getting what he wants and he's just not going to give him away for nothing. So let's be patient. Let's wait till the draft. There's going to be a lot of teams out there looking for quarterbacks as well. And then once the draft's over and then there are five or six teams out there that don't have that young quarterback to look for the future, they'll be open to making a trade and Zach can go uh, post-draft. That's the way I think it's really going down. Yeah, I could totally see that. And, you know, specifically over draft weekend, like I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see a trade where it's Zach Wilson and a day three pick attached and move for another day three pick and have some sort of swap in there. I think that's probably the most likely scenario at this point um, with him not being moved. Yep. But 
yeah, it's. I would just be surprised if at the end of the day he's he's back in the building in in 2024 in, in any capacity. I think uh, they're just gonna f- eventually find a, find a partner, yeah. move him off, probably not for a whole lot in return. But as I said, I think they kind of want to turn the page on that one. Yeah, I think everybody will make out in the long run, including Zach. You know, Zach has. Uh, they have not handled the situation with Zach at all well, and uh, he needs a fresh start. He's a talented kid. And uh, we're all going to wish him well, or at least I am, uh, when he leaves. Because uh, there's nothing that I'd rather see, and I know it would, be, it would sting Jet fans, uh, but there's nothing I'd rather see than him succeed somewhere uh, and be given a true shot. So that's something to keep an eye on. Okay, so, by the way, when we're talking about the offensive line room, let's keep in mind, too, not, you were talking about the, 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 the veterans, that both Smith and Moses, they're only on contract for this year. So the Jets need an offensive tackle. They need one. Because I'm, I'm assuming they're looking at their 25 board and going, okay, well, maybe we have Carter Warren at right tackle, and our tackle that we're going to pick in this draft will be our starting left tackle. And that's what our 2025 tackle tandem will look like as long as Carter Warren, of course, develops the way that we want him to. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you there. They don't have the long-term answer at tackle right now. I, on the left side, at least. I think Carter Warren, there's a chance he could play you know, right tackle going forward. But, you know, I'm glad that they went out and added a Morgan Moses, but that's kind of a Band-Aid fix. Tyron yeah. Smith, same thing. You're loading up to, to go for it. Totally get that. But, you know, you, you're right. It's going to be kind of in the same boat as you were this offseason uh, going into next year where you're going to need two tackles. Now, one of the your answers could be Carter Warren, but I, I think they would also like to add somebody in, in the NFL draft. And, I think that's the route that they should go. Yeah. Uh, I know Max Mitchell has started a lot over the last couple of years. I don't really think he's a, a starting caliber offensive lineman through two years in this league. You know, maybe he's your your swing tackle. I agree. Or just you know, kind of uh, just a backup roster yeah. player. But uh, they they definitely need more at that position, and I would expect them to take. Uh, an early swing on the offensive line, specifically at tackle. And and it's also why if they trade down, there's still going to be one or two quality tackles that they could have picked at 10 because yeah, everybody's kind of looking at, and, and, and I know it's been moving recently, but for the most part, it's like, all right, you got the Penn state kid, the Notre Dame kid, and those are like the top two. And now I know all of a sudden the Oregon state kid and the Alabama kid. And so there's a lot of other guys that are like hovering around of, of that. Once you get to the 10 and, and so forth, uh, positions and I think that's a good thing. Uh, we don't we don't know what Joe thinks, obviously, but if he likes two or three guys and doesn't believe that there's much difference between those two or three, then another reason why trading down is a pretty good idea. Uh, at receiver, so look, Mike Williams. We all know this is uh, this was a real sexy move, and it and if he's healthy and plays most of the season, it's going to be a great thing for the offense for Garrett Wilson. But, again, one-year deal. We don't know if he's going to be around. We would hope, but we don't know. So if Brownlee doesn't develop and if uh, Gibson is only kind of, you know, a fringe type of kid, we're back to square one again at receiver, which is why I really do believe, no matter what, their second pick is probably going to be a receiver. Yeah, I'm with you there. I like the Mike Williams edition, uh, but there's – one, as you mentioned, it's only a one-year deal. And number two, he's coming off an ACL where yep. he only played three games last year. So when he's healthy, he's a very good player, but you need an insurance policy there. Al Lazard was horrible last year. You hope that he's a little better with Aaron Rodgers, but that's that's another you know it, red flag, right? Like yeah. uh, there's some or concerns with this receiver room. I, I like Gibson, but I don't know if I want him as a starting three receiver yeah. Yeah. go 11 personnel. So I agree with you there as well. I think they're going to be active at wide receiver in in the draft. Uh, There's a lot of talent in the first few rounds at that spot. Even if they wait till 72 in the third round, there's guys who are are going to be available there. Yep. Um, I I talked about earlier with the offensive linemen. They could always you know move back, uh, and and you get a, a second round pick in the process, and you take two swings, one on the offensive line, one at the wide receiver room. But you know there's there's a lot of talented talented receivers i know malik neighbors and uh, marvin harrison jr are the the two big ones that everyone talks about but there's there's depth in this class at that position yeah i i I find i don't know whose mock draft it was it might even be jeremiah's but somebody had the jets trading up to get harrison it's like well wait a second as much as i'd like to have harrison on this team 
trading up. I mean, this team needs to trade down. They don't need to trade up. So, um, look, not that we would be, if we heard that the Jets traded up and they drafted Harrison, we'd all be, you know, uh, pretty happy about that. But uh, realistically, I don't think it makes much sense to trade up instead of trading down. Um, by the way, what do you think about the tight end position? Because, again, same thing. People are like, well, what about Brock Bowers if he's available at 10? I just think that's ridiculous. I don't think they're giving Jeremy Ruckert enough of a shot. Uh, Ruckert would be potentially playing his first full season with an opportunity to be one of the top two tight ends on the roster. Plus he gets Aaron Rodgers to throw the football to him. I think this is going to be the year that Rutgers is going to prove he was worthy of that third round uh, draft pick. And that's why I don't think they need a tight end. Yeah, I, I like Jeremy Rucker and I'd be good with him getting a, a bigger look. I also think Tyler Conklin is uh, a little underrated by, by some, because I think he's put up pretty good production the last two years with, uh, you know, pretty, mediocre to bad quarterback play the thing i'll say about bowers and it's i don't think he'd be my preference at pick 10 he's a little bit more than just your average inline tight end he's kind of more of a weapon they could absolutely line him, they could line him up as a big slot line him up out wide they at georgia they had him in the backfield so he kind of does a lot for you as in an offense so i would look at him more as just a overall offensive weapon um i don't think the Jets go that route. Uh, I, I think you're more likely to see uh, offensive line than you would be Brock Bowers, but I, I don't view him as just your, you know, your prototypical oh, uh, no. tight end. You know, he does so much more for you than just your your average tight end. So he would be. Uh, it, it would it would sort of like be when when you looked at what happened to Laporta and the type of season he had. You would say, yeah, Bowers is actually a better college tight end than Laporta was. So just imagine what Aaron Rodgers throwing the football. That's the type of season you can get out of Bowers. So I, look, again, same thing what we just said with Harrison. Do I think they're going to trade up and, and lose capital to get him? No, but if the Jets had Harrison on the team, it would be awesome. Same thing with Bowers. Do they need him? No, but if they got him, how could you not be excited about having a kid with that much talent on the team? Um but again, that just goes back to the fact that I think Ruckert has the uh, the ability of being a number one tight end, and, and I think we'll find that out this year. And the other thing too is is because I, I, I think your your point uh, is interesting because I think they'll look at Bowers if well, let's just say they, they for whatever reason that they're gonna that the, the offensive line is player isn't there that they want. And they're going to find a way to maybe come back into the second round or come back from uh, maybe next year. Maybe they'll give up a first round or next year to move back into this year's draft and they'll get their offensive line in middle, late first round. Let's just some weird scenario like that. Um, then the question probably does come down to, well, let's say Har now Harrison's off the board. Do we like, do we prefer Bowers or do we prefer one of the remaining top wide receivers in the class. So that would be the, the, the way that I could see them going about that. Even though I don't think the jets need a tight end, they might say we grade Bowers better for whatever reason than say neighbors or Dunze. They might say, we just grade him better. So yeah, if you grade him better, you might as well take him then. Yeah. Right. And he would be just looked at as probably what their, their second pass catcher behind Garrett Wilson at that point. And then if you view it that way, I think it makes a little bit more sense, but I, if you kind of pigeon your hole yourself into going, well, do they really need a tight end? No, but also that's not exactly what Brock Bowers is. Yeah. You know? So it's a little bit, it's a nuanced conversation. Again, yeah. I don't think it's going to be the most likely thing to happen, but I, I'm, I can't rule it out because they do need more weapons for this offense at some point. And they're pretty set at running back with the exception of you would think that they'll add number three at some point. Could be late in the could be late in the draft. I mean, to get Avaconda in the fifth round was a steal. So uh, but yeah, that's about it. I don't really see anything else that we haven't talked about already. You know, they're, they're set as far as their uh, return game, their kicker, their punter and all that. Um, I am going to keep my fingers crossed in a way that. Uh, I'm, well, you know, I, I shouldn't, I don't want I don't want to say anything negative about a player, but I'm going to feel kind of sick if, if that, if, if the punter in uh, Kansas city turns out to be a superstar and we had him in our room and just let him go to the chiefs. Uh, but, um, you know, I think overall special teams is set. Uh, do you think there's any other position on the roster that the jets might be looking at early in the draft? Yeah, not not really. I, I think we thought we hit on the the main ones there with uh, offensive line and, and wide receiver or weapon. I, I don't think 
we get some outside the box pick. It, it feels very um, obvious what the Jets could continue to build out. But I, I do agree with you as well. Like special teams is, is pretty much filled. I'm glad they brought back Morstead and Zerloin, you know, two guys who were really good for you last year. Uh, I thought Gibson was a solid returner as well. I'm sure yep. he'll be better in, in year two. Um, so, yeah, they, they had a top three special teams unit last year. And I think with some of the new rules as well, special teams, a little bit more value added to special teams. And uh, you think they're going to bring back any of these UFAs? I mean, uh, do you think McGovern is a possible? I'm kind of surprised that he's still available. Because um, to me, he's still a starting caliber center in the NFL. Uh, but uh, what do you think? You think any of these guys might come back? Uh, I think of this crop, Connor McGovern probably has the best chance to. Uh, they kind of did this last year. They waited a while to bring back Connor McGovern. They they signed him right before the draft, and then he ends up uh, starting the year, and they turn it over to Joe Tipman. But I, I would bring Connor McGovern back as a backup center or interior offensive lineman. Right now, you, Wes Schweitzer is pretty much their main interior guy coming off the bench. So uh, of this group, I think McGovern makes the most sense. Um, I, I don't see them bringing back Mekhi Becton. Uh, I think he's going to go somewhere else. And, and none of these other free agents really seem to be a fit. Yeah, the Becton, uh, that, that, uh, uh, Davis would be the only guy. We talked about him early on in the program. He would be the one guy uh, that we could see coming back. And before I let you go, um, the thing I wanted to uh, accentuate here is that all of these players so far that the Jets have brought in in free agency and through trades, is there one player that has ties to Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, I, I, that's a great point. I don't, I don't think so. No, right? Like last I year, I thought he was, was the GM. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. You know, last year it was Lazard and Randall Cobb and Billy Turner, and you're going down the list of all former Aaron Rodgers teammates. But yeah, this year, this year not so much. Yeah, yeah, that because that that narrative is so ridiculous. And and even for the guys in New York, it's almost like I mean, are you being serious with that? I mean, I know you just want to maybe say things to get the you know the the audience to get all frazzled and stuff but it's almost like you lose respect when you say stupid things like that that Aaron Rodgers is the general manager and not Joe Douglas so I just think that's a point that needs to be brought up because they're pretty quiet I'm not hearing about Aaron Rodgers being a GM this offseason even though you would think maybe somebody comes in eventually who knows maybe they do bring in uh, Bakhtiari he's still available right I mean there's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with having Bakhtiari on your team as a as a as sort of like your top backup in case like you said Tyron Smith gets hurt so it's still possible we'll bring in a guy but yeah I find it interesting that uh, there isn't one player yet that has ties to Aaron Rodgers this offseason so no, yeah, but uh, Tyron Smith said that you know Rogers being here was a reason for him wanting to to sign. So that's more on the on the positive side of the Aaron Rodgers being here as well. It should uh, be yes, yeah. But you, you don't, as you mentioned, you don't hear that side as much. You don't hear more the the negative of it or, or the downsides. And last year was the former oh. Rogers teammates they brought in that yeah. didn't really pan out. No, and isn't that normal though? Any you get a, a Hall of Fame quarterback that comes to any team. You're going to bring in a couple of players that he's played with. It's sort of like coaches. When coaches get hired, they bring in former players that they used to play with. So that was just a dumb narrative. And it was just one of those things that you're going to talk about because the Jets weren't very good last year and they just wanted to pile on. But uh, I don't think CJ Azuma or Randall Cobb, Randall Cobb, I'm surprised he hasn't retired yet. I don't know what he's waiting for. Yep. And by the way, Corey Davis, is that a thing? Yeah, I mean, he, he was reinstated to the league, so that that is one that uh, supposedly he's looking to come back and play, uh, wants to go back. He's, he lives in Tennessee and won't, would rather go to a team that's closer to home, but okay. I really haven't heard much on his market. Like, his name was brought up when he was coming back to the league, and then it's been pretty quiet the last two weeks, so I'm not sure what's happening there. All right, Matt, I appreciate it. Uh, what are you going to be doing between now and the draft? Are you going to be doing – coverage during the draft yes so during the draft uh we live stream it's me and two other guys over on talking jets we we live stream all three days so you get our live reaction of uh the jets draft picks in each round and the lead up to the draft i'll be doing uh tons of different mock drafts talking about prospects and whatever rumors are happening around the nfl uh draft that the new york jets are linked to so a ton of coverage over the next few weeks 
Awesome. Well, obviously, we'll put a link in the description so everybody can check that out. And uh, we also look forward to we'll, we'll make sure that you have uh, uh, PDFs on the draft guide, the RLED's official draft guides. You can give them away to your audience, Jet fans. I'm sure they'll be interested in checking that out. And uh, we'll make sure we get you one as well. So uh, uh, always uh, great talking Jets football with you, Matthew. Thanks for doing this. And uh, we'll talk uh, definitely sometime after the draft. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me. You got it.